six tackles already this season. He had 28 last year. So what do you attribute the increase in production to? Um, I'd say, well, first of all, I'm playing more. Um, so that that helps. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's really the main thing. More opportunities to go. If you look at the snaps, though, I think it's like, like 0.07 per snap last year. It's like 0.13 per snap this year during the tackles. Yeah. So, I mean, is it just in terms of also physicality, seeing the game? Yeah. Um, the scheme definitely clicked. I remember the first scrimmage is when it all like really came together for me during camp. Um, and that, since that point, it feels like the back of my hand. Obviously, I still make mistakes. I'm not saying I don't make mistakes, but um, it just it's a lot easier now uh, knowing where to be. So I that's definitely I'm in the right spot to go make plays. You and uh, Barry Carter both had team tackles over the past two weeks. Um, can you just describe you guys' relationship and synergy on the field with each other? Yeah, like, I didn't even realize. <laughs> if you watch my interview from after the Florida State game, I r really was not happy. Like, I thought I played horrible. Um, and then I, like, saw the stats, and I was like, oh, I didn't really play that bad. Um, but me and Barrett, I mean, that's my best friend, so – we do pretty much everything together. Uh, so carrying it over to the field is pretty easy to do it. Um, it really just comes down to communication. Like we're out there calling stuff out, predicting for things to happen. Um, and then we can bounce off ideas of what we think the offense might run. So I, I think that definitely helps us out to be able to go and perform. Why, why didn't you think you played well against uh, FSU? I just – there were so many – I feel like I could have had, like, three picks. Uh, just w watching back the tape, I definitely could have. Um, and I knew it once I got off the field. I was like, oh, I could have had a pick right there. Um, but we got the job done, so. I think there was one in the in, uh, end zone that kind of – Yeah, kinda, like you, that you, yeah you leaped up, but you couldn't uh, get up and get it. I guess what did yeah. you see on that play? Um, I should have got – it was third and 13. And I'm seven yards deep. I should have been way further back. Um, yeah, see, like that's a that's one that easily could have been an interception. So. When you look what this Wake Forest offense brings to the table, Sweet good one talked about just sort of the need for discipline, how physical they are at the top. Just sort of what have you seen on film from them uh, so far? Yeah, they're good. Um, their record doesn't show it, but. They're they're good. I like they're a really good team. Um, yeah, gap discipline, especially with that slow mesh, because if you bounce out of your gap, then next thing you know, their running back's really good, and he's gonna he's gonna make a play. So we really just got to stay disciplined in our gaps and use our hands. So if the ball does get handed off or the quarterback keeps it, we can shed and make a play. Something maybe like practice or something you can see the game to better prep you for that mesh offense because they move a lot for a long time. Right. Something that really draws you in. How do you sort of prepare for that? Re like really just what I said, staying like staying in your gap. It's gonna be hard not to be nosy and wanna shed and two gap it, but you just gotta stay disciplined. Um and so we've been working on that. Uh just holding it, holding it, uh, which is tough. It goes against everything you've ever been taught. So. You said that things clicked in that first scrimmage. What is it for a linebacker? Like, what's that 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 final piece? What's that final click? Um. I can't really speak for all linebackers, but for me, it was the run fits. Um, realizing that majority of all of our run fits are the same. Um, Based on different sets, it's like a, it's like a doing a little bit of math every play. You just count to, count to three. <laughs> that's what I do pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's what really clicked for me during camp, um, knowing where I'm fitting, and then obviously when we're blitzing off of it, knowing who's replacing and what. How much of that is though? Like you mentioned, like Barrett being one of your best friends, and so how much is that relationship a big part of it? How much is, like like you said, like knowing who's coming, knowing 
just where everybody else is and what they're doing and that trust that comes from knowing like you've got a guy like Barrett who knows it better than anybody. I think that's everything. Um, being able to turn and ask maybe if I'm not quite sure on something I can turn and ask him or I can turn around and ask RJ Mickens or Tyler Venables. I can ask one of them, hey, what's going on here? And they can dish out a quick response is really helpful. We talked to Barrett um, about just kind of the the strength of your guys' room and the closeness of everybody. Um, adding Sammy Brown to it, he raved about how smart Sammy is. Um, just what's it, it been like to kind of see this this evolution and the identity develop of your guys' room? Uh, it's great to see. Um, we've had pretty much everyone in our room since the spring. So we went through spring mat drills together, we went through spring ball, we went through summer workouts all together, we went through camp. Um, yeah, I'm just really proud of how everyone's grown up. Um, we've gotten a lot better, especially since last year, so I'm really proud of that. No, like receivers, one, two. teach the younger guys to build those relationships so that they can turn to anybody on the field and be like, hey, what's happening on this play? And trust that they're going to know what to do. Um, well, I mean, part of it is like they're coming to college and they have to make some friends because unless they know somebody here. So I think part of it is just like stepping out of your shell and meeting new people and making friends with new people. Um, but then one thing that I really talk about is getting up there and watching tape with different positions, um, like especially the, the safeties, because the safeties fit are in the fits with us so much. So being able to talk to them and say, hey, oh, are you fitting here, right, on this play? Or So then it, when you get on the field, it's like it's just like you were in the film room. You can ask them. Then you can help each other out. Were you a multi-sport athlete growing up? Yeah, I was. What other sports did you play? Um, baseball, basketball, soccer. All through high school? No, I only played baseball and football in high school and basketball. How have you seen those other sports translate into what you now do on a football field? How have they helped you? Um, I just think you use so many, like basketball is literally man coverage the entire game if you think about it. I'm covering this guy one-on-one, -on -one, trying to prevent him from going there. Um, and then baseball, I would say that really helps with ball skills, um, being able to track the ball in the air, and then also change the direction a little bit to reaction. Um, but I just think all those movements just contribute to you becoming a better athlete. Because um, if you can – you use different muscle groups for each sport. This is like kind of sciencey, but you use different muscle groups for each sport. So if you're playing the same sport your entire life, you're just going to overwork those muscles and be really developed in one area. Where if you play multiple, then you can. It's almost like you're a like baseball uses the term five tools. It's like that for every sport. Then you have multiple skills when it comes to everything. So what do you play baseball? Uh, I played third base, outfield. Uh, I wasn't really a pitcher. I was a thrower. I couldn't really throw strikes. I threw hard. Were you a slugger at the plate or more just like uh, Kind of, I guess. I had a home run my first at bat in high school, but after that, I didn't really perform too well. <laughs> so. Uh, the expectations are obviously high for you guys. You guys have your own. You've mentioned it. Coming off the field, you didn't think you played well um, because of those those couple of moments. How close are you guys to where you where you think you should be, where you want to be? Uh, you know, Dabo keeps talking post game like they did great here. This part wasn't where we wanted. They did great now on this part and and not so much here. Um. I don't really think it's like our job to tell. I think we just got to keep our head down and keep putting in the work every day. Because um, at the end of the day, if we get satisfied, then we're going to end up hurting ourselves. So uh, really just got to 
keep our head heads down and preach the mindset that we haven't done anything because in my eyes we really haven't um like we're four and one we're halfway through the season okay there's so much left there's so much left that's on the table and if the season were to end right now we would we'd be an average team so there's just so much left that we all of our goals are still there and there's so much out there for us to do and prove. It seems like Dabo is chasing a different piece of history every game this season, and he never realizes it. Do you guys know sometimes going into the game, and does that ever add any extra motivation to want to go win for that record wherever it is? Quite frankly, no. Like, I didn't even know he was going to be the ACC until after the game, and I saw Graham Neff in the locker room, and I was like, What's he doing here? <laughs> and then, like I said, it was up to him, and I did a double take. I was like, oh. And then he gave him the game ball, and I was like, oh, dang. Congrats, coach. Um, but, no, I don't really. I mean, it is pretty sick to be here, like, witnessing all this. Like, last year against Notre Dame, what was that, the most home games or something like that? Yeah, it was something. It's a different piece every Yeah, day. it was like the Clemson – winningest Clemson coach ever or something like that. So – to be able to experience all that is pretty cool. You talked about how you guys are clicking and you found yourself clicking in the off season. How does starting in a way stretch playing at FSU, how does that contribute to y'all's chemistry and it's a whole go forward? Um, well, at away games, it's only us. Like, it, there's 80 of us and that's it. There's a few people in the stands rooting for us, but we're all we got so um really just coming together in those moments and bringing our own energy because we don't we're, we can't feed off the crowd in an away game so i think learning to do that and great coach swinney always says great teams win on the road so being able to go on the road and win is very important so um, I would say that looking back on it, it was pretty funny and he laughs about it too. <laughs> um, he gets intense during practice too, which is good because I mean, the games are intense, so you got to simulate that intensity somehow. Um, yeah, the most intense moment, uh, it was probably then. He was pretty intense during Kentucky last year just because that game was so up and down. Um, yeah, definitely when he broke the iPad. Like, what is he like, like during the Kentucky game being mad? Like, what is it? It's not really – I wouldn't say mad. It's like – it's – it's a passionate game. Um, and then when something happens, you're making a big mistake or whatever, just emotions come out. It's not. It's never personal. But. Clemson shared Dabo's post-game speech. You were talking about all the records and all of that. Um, and I think Kyle tweeted that being able to witness a moment like that, he feels like sometimes he's in like an epic sports movie of like, these great moments. What's it like when Dabo – just kind of like love bombs on you guys. Like he was talking so much about it's about you guys and you guys becoming good men, not about the wins and the records. I mean, that's all. That's why we all came here. Um, obviously, yes, the championships and success on the field is important or, and it's a really big factor. But at the end of the day, football is going to end. And this place is making me a better man than what I was when I came here. So that aspect of Clemson is why a lot of people choose this place and why a lot of parents want to send their kids here. So for him to – he always says it's not about who you play or it's not about – it's about how you play. And how we play the game and how we do things here is – it's different. So I'm really thankful for him because, I mean – He's helped a lot of people out in his tenure here. So, yeah. I want to go back to the iPad. What actually happened? Like, were you guys watching play? And then you just took it and threw it? 
I can't remember exactly like what play it was, but somebody made a mistake and he's like, "Dang it!" He punched it, and I think his ring broke it. Yeah, but it was it was pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It was yeah. It was destroyed. You mentioned um, you wasn't kind of satisfied with your performance against FSU. Um, we look back at the film, and like I know the coach gave out like grades and report cards after games. Was that kind of like a deduction that you were expecting, or were you kind of like when you got the like when you got your grade back today, they kind of mark it positive when they review the film? Um. Yeah. Well, like when I ran, like typically when I, I know when I make a mistake on the field. Um. So and then now we have the iPad, so I. Coach West will tell me, um, but I was sad. I was pretty happy with my grade overall. Um, that's what I was saying. Like I, I watched the tape back and saw my grade, and I was like, oh, I actually didn't play that bad. So, Coach, what do you say? Sometimes guys kind of like are you trying to argue? Like why are they getting marked down on this and marked down on uh, like marked down on something else? Like, have you seen any of those interactions uh, this season? Uh, no, I haven't. That's typically like a one-on-one -on -one thing with the coach. Um, but, I mean, if you make a mistake, like if I make a mistake, I'll go and ask because ultimately I, I want to get better. I want to perform. I want to perform better and not make mistakes. So I can go and ask Coach West, what am I supposed to do here or what can I do differently? Some of the younger guys kind of reach out to you. You were uh, Barrett as well, like Sammy, D. Craig, if they make a mistake, they just want a perspective from like, what would you have done better? Uh, yeah, for sure. We, I mean, we're up there every day watching tape. So, and then on the field um, during practice, during scout periods, if someone makes a mistake, when they run off, now that it's weird, I'm an older guy, but I can coach him up a little bit. Time for one more question. Thanks for that. Sweet. Thanks, Mike. Clear woods.